In this video, I'm going to use special relativity to illustrate a very deep connection between electricity and magnetism. What we are going to do is to look at the same physical scenario from two different perspectives, that is, from two different reference frames. What we're going to see is that a force that is entirely magnetic in one frame of reference can be entirely electric in another frame of reference. That is, we're going to see that electricity and magnetism are really two aspects of a larger phenomenon that we might call electromagnetism. In the frame of reference shown in the top figure, we have a stationary wire segment with a current flowing to the left, and we have an external negative charge with a velocity to the right. Keep in mind that if the current is flowing to the left, that means the electrons in the wire are flowing to the right. So the speed v here is representing the speed of these electrons. Now, the protons in the wire are, of course, at rest along with the wire, which is at rest. Now, in this figure, I've greatly exaggerated the thickness of the wire because I want to show the protons and electrons in the wire separately for reasons that will become apparent later. However, let's imagine that this wire is actually really very thin so that the protons and electrons are essentially right on top of each other and hence equidistant from this external negative charge. Furthermore, we're going to assume that in this frame of reference the wire segment is electrically neutral. That is, in a given length of wire segment there are the same number of protons as there are electrons. Consequently, the attraction of the external negative charge to the protons will be balanced by an equal repulsion of the external charge from the electrons. So there will be no net electrical force on this negative external charge. There will, however, be a magnetic force. The leftward current will produce a magnetic field in the region of the moving charge that is out of the page. The charge moving through the magnetic field will then feel a force according to the Lorentz force law. Using your preferred implementation of the right-hand rule, you can determine that the magnetic force on this moving charge will be toward the wire. Now, in the bottom figure, we're going to look at this exact same scenario, but in a frame of reference where this external negative charge is at rest. This means that the electrons in the wire are also at rest, because in the initial frame of reference, the electrons and the external negative charge were moving to the right with the same speed and same direction. Uh, so they're moving together, which means in a frame of reference where one of them is at rest, that means the others are at rest. Meanwhile, the wire itself and the protons in it are all moving to the left. You'll notice some other differences in the two figures, and they result from length contraction, which says that the length of an object in a frame of reference in which it is moving is less than in a frame of reference in which it is stationary. In the top figure, the wire is stationary, while in the bottom figure, it's moving to the left. So therefore, in the bottom figure, the wire segment is shorter. Likewise, the distance between the protons is shorter in the bottom frame because they're moving to the left, whereas in the top frame, the protons are stationary. Finally, in the bottom frame, the electrons in the wire are stationary, uh, but they're moving to the right in the frame shown at the top figure. So the electrons are closer together in the top figure than they are in the bottom figure where they're at rest. Let's look at the implications of this with regard to possible electric or magnetic forces on this external negative charge. In this frame of reference, the electrons in the wire are stationary, but the protons are moving to the left. That means we have a current to the left, and that produces an outward magnetic field in the region of the external negative charge. However, in this frame of reference, the external negative charge is stationary, so it can't experience a magnetic force because magnetic force is zero if the velocity is zero. However, in this frame of reference, a given length of wire has more protons than electrons. 
So it has an overall positive net charge, which will attract this external negative charge toward it. Thus, in looking at the same physical situation from two different reference frames, we have a description in the first frame in which the force on the external negative charge is entirely magnetic, and then in the second frame of reference in which the force on the external negative charge is entirely electric. Finally, in closing, I want to say something about the fields themselves. In the original frame of reference, the stationary neutral wire with current flowing to the left produces a magnetic field, but if the wire is thin enough so that the protons and electrons are right on top of each other, it produces no electric field. So in the original frame of reference, we have a magnetic field out here, but no electric field due to the wire. On the other hand, in the second frame of reference, the wire produces not only a magnetic field, but also, because it has a net positive charge overall, it produces also an electric field. That is, a field that is entirely magnetic in one frame of reference is both magnetic and electric in another frame of reference. To sum this all up in one sentence, we can say that electricity and magnetism are not separate phenomena. Rather, they are interrelated aspects of the same phenomenon, which we might call electromagnetism.